morning right just setting off in the morning of day three and see that old structure over there that was our pitch last night deer wandering around us all night and all this morning now we're cracking on and just up here i don't know if you can see over there there's a few tents and there's a little building next to it that's that's Sally's Bothy which we were going to head for last night when we came over the top of the hill we could see all the tents outside so we just pitched away from it it's going to be a, another tough day today but I can't see it being as bad as yesterday that's that's one of the toughest days walking I've had in my life it was brutal but we're still here we're still plodding so that's the view not bad and today we're going to go over the peninsula just past where the bothy is in the tents and then we turn right because the tides and we climb up over the top and then we cross the river further up whereas normally you could take a chance across all the boggy marshland and the low tide but that's not today right see you in a bit just making our way around the, around the headland and we've come to the, the flats now we're making our way towards the the muddy flats and we're going to try and cross over to a bridge somewhere over there and then we're up away and around there where you can see another good climb coming oh what a start of the morning river crossing as soon as we leave the tent and that climb out over the peninsula and then that which is probably a mile of shin deep bog I'm absolutely bust already but we crack on scenery stunning though this is why we do it absolutely beautiful There we go, heading into Lord of the Rings territory. And it's looking like touch wood. We might have a nice day ahead of us. Hopefully when we get up and over the top of the next climb, see nice views. Hopefully. This is the type of footpath you're dealing with on the Cape Wrath Trail. We're just making our way up through this gorge and once again it's been absolute brutal climb up and down up and down rocks tree roots everything and i think we've got a little a little more to go around the corner and then hopefully we start to climb out of this place but that looks a decent climb as well so i'll get my breath back and i'll get back to you right just after i spoke to you last i've just walked on about another 50, 60 yards, a bit more scrambling and then you come around the corner to this absolute filth this is insane beautiful isn't it look at the state of this Not bad. Hard work getting here though. Come and try it. Just another quick little catch up if you can see down the bottom of the valley there the uh, lord of the rings cliff face where we were at a while ago and we've climbed up all of that thinking we were somewhere near 
and we've still got that to go. That's what you call a heartbreaker. Better crack on with it. And we're still not there yet. Yeah, me. Oh, kill a pint. morning that I've just shown you there that's Barrisdale Bay and I've just left the Barrisdale Bothy where I stayed last night so a bit of a catch-up from yesterday um, yesterday we, we, I'm actually in the Noidart area which is quite a tough area it's popular with Monroe baggers and there was I think five or six tents five or six seven people camping outside last night and a couple inside as well and I was the only sort of hiker, the rest of them were all out bagging on roads. So it shows it's a popular area because it's very mountainous. Now, when I said on day two, it's the hardest day walking I've ever had. And scratch that, yesterday was brutal. And uh, at one point I thought I was going to be tapping out. When I, was, when I finally got over that ascent, that was an absolute killer. It just went on and on. Uh, when I got to the top and started the descent down the other side, my legs were absolutely shot. And as a result of, the, of that and the weaknesses in my legs, I fell over a few times. And the last time I fell over, I was thinking to myself, how many times am I going to get away with this before I do some, do some damage? Anyway, about 30 seconds after that, I, I slipped again. My left ankle went out from under me and I landed on my right hand side on a rock on my ribs, luckily. I didn't do any damage, but when I got back to the bothy last night and I took my shoes and everything off, my ankle started to throb and I thought, this is it, I'm toast. But I've got a few painkillers in, had a nice rest in the bothy, something to eat. Got, got into bed about, must have been eight o'clock, nice and early. And I've got this morning and it doesn't feel too bad. So I'm pushing on. And first objective of the day is to try and get to in Loch Horn, on Loch Horn, and that normally takes people around three to four hours. So by the time I get there, hopefully there'll be a coffee shop or something open. So I'll try and get loads of sugar into me there. Unfortunately, it won't be beer. They don't sell it. But never mind. We crack on. See you a bit. Just as another add-on to the last bit. When I was suffering last night and my head was down, I went to see the estate manager to see what was involved in public transport, buses, trains, and what have you. And basically, where I am in this area, this road runs about three quarters of a mile. It's just his estate road where he can go get up and down his vehicles. And basically, the only way to get out, even if you're injured, is to hike out. There's no access to anywhere outside. So, hiking out to the thing. A bit tough with a twisted ankle or most broken bones. Touch wood, that won't happen. But it just shows what remote areas we're in. I haven't had phone signal for, I think it's, 48 hours now, I think it's 48 hours since I've had phone signal. I'm hoping to get something when I get to the, the tea room at Kinlock Horn so I can get in touch with people and let them know I'm alright. I've actually got a, a GPS device, like a GPS tracker emergency locator. 
and I can send pre preset messages from that but even that looks to be playing up it says messages are sent and then two hours later it pops up saying the field and then it says the sent again and so I don't know whether Mandy's getting them or not right I'll catch you in a bit down the length of Loch Looney and I've just just had my first climb of the day and I'm just starting to descend down these ones down the side of the loch they're not as severe and I'll get the Kinloch Horn and then the next target after that is Shield Bridge which is probably going to be hopefully tomorrow but there's a, another really really big climb between Kinloch Horn and Shield Bridge so I think the will be a case of just getting far as I can whether it's this side of it or try possibly to get over the climb and camp somewhere down the other side and have an easy day into shield bridge tomorrow so i'll catch up with you later I don't know if you can pick it up, but there's an otter there. Just diving down and grabbing food. There he is, he's not on yet, he or she. I'm getting there, I think we're about two thirds of the way down the lock now. Hasn't been too, too bad so far, fairly straightforward, but this one's a bit of a slog. But, uh, it is a bit higher than the others, as you can see. And I think by the time we hit the top of the gear there, I think there's another couple of outcrops. And then we should be have Kinloch Horn in sight. It's quarter past eight, I'm expecting to get there about half nine, ten o'clock, something like that. So we'll catch up when we're when we're there or when there's sight of it. I was thinking to myself, it's not been too bad this morning. Now, typically, what I think is the last climb before we drop down to Kinloch Horn was a tough one. But we're at the top of it now, and look what's just opened out. Beautiful. So we should be down there pretty soon and well if that cafe's open I'm not even bother about drinking beer a pint a freezing cold coca-cola full of ice is the order of the day I think and then a scone with jam and cream Little bit of a road walk into Kinloch Horn now. That's gonna be a don't like road walking normally, but it's gonna be a pleasure. After all that, that's uh, the last part around there. 
there was a seriously rocky scramble all the way around it's right on the edge of the coast it's, a, it's a sort of like that but this part is built up with rocks as well where everyone walks across quite tough but we're through with that now please let this cafe be open It's open. Jackpot. Yes. Have you got a QR reader? Off again. Two cans of coke. Two pieces of homemade fruit pie. Beautiful. Now, we're going up there, up and over that one, I think it's that one there. We're up and over that. That could be the next one, not sure yet. Could be a closer. But, next climb coming up. Uh, this is uh, a 700 foot climb, this initial climb. And I'm at 374 feet now. And that's where we were down there, about about half an hour ago, 40 minutes, something like that. Nice slow steady climb. I just I just can't you never get sick of this landscape. It's absolutely amazing. You'll all probably get bored with it soon. Beats listen to me waffle on doesn't it? Little error reading the map there. I looked at the wrong contour line. It's not 700 feet, it's actually 830, but we've topped out now. And here's the view just opening up nicely. And I'll see how I'm doing, but I think that little locking that you can see, that little blue locking in the bottom, I'm sure that's on our route. And if it is, that might just be somewhere nice to pitch up for the night, get naked and get in. I won't fill in that though. Comments. There's Loch Horn behind me there. Can't believe it, that's where I started off this morning. Right round the other end of the loch. I've come all the way up and down over all the contours, round into Kinloch Horn. Up here. That's a postcard shot, that. It's unbelievable, it just gets better. Every time you turn a corner, you're just surrounded by giants. What weather we've got. You can see up ahead there, there's a deer stalker's hut. It's quite a, it's quite a famous spot on the Cape Wrath Trail. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of hikers pitch there on the night. And if you if you first there you can actually get in it and kick down there. But it's only it's only ten past one in the afternoon, so I won't be doing that. And if you can see, but my route is gonna take us 
up across and over the top there. So I haven't worked out the distance yet, I think. I would hazard a guess and say I'm probably three miles, three and a half miles from Kinloch Horn. So that's six and a half to Shieldbridge. I can't see me doing that today, so I'll probably pitch up somewhere early, drop into Shieldbridge tomorrow, book into a hotel and have a face full of drink. See you in a bit. That's it. It's a day start Nothing much but ideal if there's a storm. We're about to start another descent. We hit just over, just under 1100 feet. Now we're starting to descend again. And I'm pretty sure that this here, this is what's called the Falcon Ridge. Now again, it's quite popular with Monroe baggers. There's some, there's some real big boys up there. Thankfully though, I think we drop down and go through the Bailac in the middle between them. But we'll find out soon enough. If you're looking for tips, ignore that last one I just gave you. We don't head down through that bailac. We make our way around here, there, through that bailac and drop down that way. So just to put the record straight, once I looked at the map, I realized I'd said the wrong thing. So ignore that one, go that way. Just making our way up the end of this climb. We're back up at 1400 feet, but we've got a little bit more to go yet. The route we're taking, we're gonna cross the river at some point. And we're going to climb up through the bailac and we drop over that way. And that little lock on us had looked like just a camping area, it was the wrong one. The lock on the room for is actually just over, over the peak of the bailac there. So we should be there, hopefully, in the next uh, hour or two. I'm just going to grab a bit more water and then drop on. Right, we're nearly at the at the summit of this climb, this Bealac. That's where we've come up from, right down there. That was a brutal climb we're at. We are now at 2,239 feet, and it's Tony up there. I don't know if you can see it in the distance, there's a little, it's a little marker. That's the actual highest point, but I've videoed here, just in case we lost that view. It's, uh, it's probably looks like it'll be another 20 or 30 feet higher, but that was another tough one, another one out the way though, it's hard to pitch up. Right, another little correction, what I said back there was the Falcon Ridge, isn't, this is it. That's the ridge, and I think this is what's called the saddle, and this has got some Gaelic name or something, I don't, I wouldn't attempt to pronounce it, but I think now we have to head along that ridge across there. So on we go. I'll pitch stuff for night, just get my thermals on, tension I'll set up. I just crossed. A couple of miles down there, possibly two, three miles, we've got um, Shield Bridge. So I'll be, having this, I'll be having a nice lie in in the morning, slow, steady walk into there, try and get into a and b or a hotel or something for tomorrow. Have a rest day. My legs are paggered. And then ready to go the day after, hopefully, have a few beers, nice pub meal. Can't wait for it. See you tomorrow. <laughs>